Howdy folks, welcome back to The Good, The Bad and The Ugly with the Mighty Jingles in World of Tanks. We're starting off with an Indian Panzer replay. This is Kexi, driving his Indian Panzer. It's a tier 8 German medium tank, one of the newer ones. It was introduced a couple of patches ago. It's not a bad tank. Um, I really enjoyed playing the Indian Panzer on the test server. Unfortunately, when I got one on live, I, I just haven't really had that many good games in it. Nothing wrong with the tank, it's just the way I'm driving it. Um, but, you know, it, it's not a bad machine. And I have started to have some good games in it recently, and my opinion of the machine is going up. It went up a lot after watching this game. What you're going to see Kexi doing here is side scraping and angling to just completely troll the opposition. First shot fired at him. One of those big Russians. Missed. Blew away some of the cover in front of him. Now, watch this. He's hurt that IS, but a KV-4 from any angle... Well, there's a reason why they call it the KV Fortress. And the KV-4 does give him problems. And at this point... Well, hardly anybody actually fires at him. There's only that one shot that's been fired in his direction so far, and it hit the building in front of him. But if you see the way he's angling... Anything that hits him... ...stands a very, very good chance of just going into the tracks. And that's a well-angled KV-4. He finally gets a shot into the mini, uh, mini turret on the top. The KV-4 decides to back off. Now, he's looking at the map, he's seeing a T-32, a Carnarvon and an ELC rushing their artillery. We have an E-25 on our team who spotted the threat as well. And there's a T-20 there too. And he's rushing over. Artillery is getting the hell out of there. And Kexi's putting the speed of this little thing to good use to come over and help this E-25 deal with the threat to the flank. Misses the ELC, but the E-25's got it. Defends himself from the ELC and then backs off. Kexi starts opening up on the T-20. E-25's given this guy all sorts of problems as well. But he knows there's a T-32 and a Carnarvon up there somewhere. So he continues to press the attack. E-25 is unloading a world of hurt into that T-20 with its massive rate of fire. T-20 backs off, safe from the E-25, not so safe from Kexi. So there's his first actual kill. He's done almost 1400 damage so far. Now, at this point, it starts getting a little bit surreal. We just saw a tree fall, and there's the T-32. The Carnarvon has gone around, so you're going to need to kill this T-32 quickly and hope the E-25 can hold out. And I swear, this T-32 driver must have been drunk. Watch this. E-25's in trouble. E-25 hurt the Carnarvon. But he's dead. So now the Carnarvon's coming, and Kexi needs to finish this T-32 off quickly, but the T-32 driver is not making it hard. He's taken one hit so far. His tracks eat that one. Look at how he's angled. Carnarvon keeps going for his side, but at that angle he's got to get through all of his tracks. Does it again. And again. Caught him at a bad angle, so he uses a repair kit to get his tracks back up and reposition 
re-angle, pommel that Carnarvon's lower plate. Does it again. Again, his tracks eat the shot. It's another shot into the Carnarvon. This Carnarvon <laughs> has got to be cursing. Again, re-angles, tracks eat the shot again. Finishes the Carnarvon off. Now, there's only two of them left, and if you look at the map, look at where our artillery is. <laughs> Artillery's back themselves up into a corner. It's a very smart position. He'll be loaded, he'll be ready. Anybody trying to get him, he's going to get a shot at them before they can fire. Now, the enemy team make a classic mistake here, which you see over and over and over, when there are only a couple of tanks left on both teams, but one side outnumbers the other. Instead of sticking together, ganging up and making it two different three-on-one fights, they successfully managed to completely fail to support each other. We just saw a tree falling over there. We know somebody is about to come into the cap. And the enemy IS has just gotten close enough to spot our AMX-13 F3 artillery. But he only has 122 health, and RT is loaded and waiting for him to come around the corner. There's the KV-3. Where's the T-28 prototype? KV-3 rushes his shot. He hits Kexi's outside drive wheel. All he does is blow his tracks off. Side scrapes again. Totally bounces that shot. Reloads. Punishes this KV-3. Artillery has killed the IS. Kexi loses his tracks again. Doesn't care. He's not taking any damage. Side scrapes again around the corner. Finishes the KV-3 off. Meanwhile, the T-28 prototype has now finally arrived. Too late to support and help the IS. He does kill the artillery, but Artie gets another shot into him. Now the T-28 prototype only has 249 health remaining. Kexi still has 949 health. Personally, my money's not on the T-28 prototype. It's strong from the front, but it only has 50 millimeters of side armor. And it's really slow. And there he is. Fires on the move. It misses. T-28 prototype. Blows his tracks off. He's looking for a spot where he can penetrate. With the 90mm gun. He gets a crit. And the T-28 prototype fires and destroys his ammo rack. Now he doesn't have a repair kit, but he doesn't need one. Because there is absolutely no way in hell T-28 prototype is going to be able to outmaneuver an Indian Panzer. So he waits, and he takes the side shot, and he wins the game. So that was a masterclass from Kexi in his Indian Panzer in how to take advantage of the tracks of a machine like this, which is a thinly armoured machine, and only through effective side scraping and angling trick the enemy into going for what it thinks is going to be an easy side shot when in fact the tracks are just going to chew those shots up over and over and over again. That was a steel wall game. He actually took 11 hits. 10 of them penetrated, but only 2 did damage. 8 of the shots that were fired at him were fired into his tracks. Did no damage whatsoever. And he did nearly 5,000 damage, got 5 kills, earned his mastery badge, and made 60,000 credits profit. So, from one German medium tank that uh, really does not have a lot of armour and has to side scrape and angle well in order to bounce any kind of shots fired at it, to another German tank that really doesn't have a problem <laughs> when it's being shot at. The E75, driven by Shadow, is an exceptionally strong tank, especially when you're in a tier 9 game and you're one of only three tier 9s on your team. You should expect to see E75s be able to do well in this kind of match. But there's doing well, and then there's doing well. This was 
pretty spectacular. Shadow is here in his E75 on the Swamp map, which was introduced to the game relatively recently after being remodeled for physics. And he's heading up onto the northern flank to meet the enemy rush that comes over the bridge from the west. And he's not completely alone up here. But when you see the position that he gets into, the T-69, the T-32, who is down to the south of him, are not in a position to give him any kind of supporting fire. He does, however, have very good artillery, and on the hill behind him, overlooking the base, there's a Rheinmetall Borsig Waffenträger, who's going to be very useful. The Jagdpanther, who's with him slightly to the south, well, not so much. Bounces a shot from the Pershing, does 500 damage to him in return. And there's a whole bunch of enemy tanks coming around here. And because of the ground depression where they are, he's pretty much having to fight them all off alone. He is fighting them off alone in an E75, however. And he does have some very useful support from both artillery and that Rheinmetall Borsig behind him. Just not quite yet. They're going to have to get a bit closer before the tank destroyer has effective shots at them. Now, the E75, it's the first really effective brawling heavy tank that the Germans get. And it's not just because of the armour, which is very, very strong from the front. The gun that it gets is the first relatively inaccurate gun that the German heavy tanks get. And this kind of sets the scene for the German heavies at tier 9 and 10, where they're very, very strongly armoured tanks, but the guns are not that good, except at medium to short range. Artillery gets a good one in there on the SU-100. I don't know what this Jagdpanther thought he was going to do there. But we're going to have him. And there's his second kill. Pershing's still out there. The IS is still out there somewhere as well. There's the Pershing. And there's the IS. Oof, that's going to leave a mark. And artillery's working these guys over as well. Shadow has actually not taken any damage yet. Oof, right in the face of that IS. He's not having a very good day. Of course, the team as a whole is not doing very well at all. They're losing 3-7. Lost his tracks. He's not going to use a repair kit on them. Let's go. Because he has support. Look at that. Rheinmetall Borsig opening up on the Pershing. Shadow knew he was there. He's keeping his front towards the IS. Finishes off the Pershing. The IS manages to hit his ammo rack. Now, he uses the repair kit for that. And then, reloads. Finishes off the IS. Four kills. So, he has two-thirds of the kills that his team has managed to accomplish so far in this game. They're losing 6-10. There's only five of them left. T-69's making a run on that T-34 there. Took a big hit doing it. But the T-34 has a very slow reload. And the T-69 has an autoloader. And he has an E-75 coming up to help him. And he just obliterates the T-34. Unfortunately, somebody gets a big old hit in on that T-69. He's now down to 116 health. But they are pulling the scores back. 
Now Shadow has taken a beating. He's down to 800 health. But they know where the majority of the enemy tanks are. So while they're still spotted, pops up onto the ridge line. E75 has better gun depression to the side of the tank than it does from the front. Plants one right into that T32. They'll know he's here now, so he straightens his armor out. Pops up for another look. There's an AT-15. Plants one right in the side. And there's an enemy E-75. Now, recent patch took the top engine off a lot of these German tanks, while increasing the top speed and their maneuverability. That E-75, however, still has to climb a hill to get around to Shadow. And Shadow can use the top speed of the E-75 by going downhill, opening the distance between himself and the E-75 and coming around the flank to get some shots in on these guys before the E-75 can crest the hill and come around after him. So that's exactly what he does. Kills the IS-3. The third NAND has a very powerful gun. You'll note that Shadow does have seven rounds of APCR ammo, premium ammunition. He hasn't used any of them yet. He hasn't needed to. But that E-75 He's going to be coming around behind us sooner or later. Yep, there he is. Luckily, sometimes you wonder. <laughs> he had a shot at the rear of Shadow's E75, and all he managed to do was hit his tracks. Looks to be a stock E75, though. So he finishes him off. The Ferdinand is putting effective fire into him. But he's got to go around and deal with this. 4502B which is another very very strong tank from the front not so much from the side he's trying to keep himself safe from the Ferdinand, he takes a hit there but he's getting some fantastic support from the Lorraine 15550 artillery takes another hit there in his tracks, he's angling very very well, artillery comes to his aid before the 4502B can reload he knows that Ferdinand's still out there somewhere. There he is. Ferdinand has missed. Oh, T-32. Puts a shot into him instead. Hoping that artillery... I mean, the artillery has not let him down yet. Now, he doesn't want to give that Ferdinand more shots at him. And he bounces one from the T-32. Which is a good tank, but it does lack a little in gun depression. He's going for his commander's hatch. Artillery solves the problem for him. It doesn't look like artillery actually has effective fire at that Ferdinand around the corner of that hill as he is positioned. So Shadow plants one into him anyway. And then finishes him off. Now, where's that AT-15? That was his eighth... Oh, there he is. There he is. Now, the AT... Yeah, artillery took a shot. Missed. The AT-15 is very vulnerable to artillery here. Shadow is not. Our artillery hasn't been spotted. Their artillery can't do a thing to support this AT-15. If the AT-15 had any sense, he would back off, get into artillery cover, and let his M12 support him. But he didn't. And there's Shadow's ninth kill. Seven and a half thousand damage done, at least, you know, seven and a half thousand damage that we know of. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so, suddenly it's two on one. You'll notice we did actually have a very, very good artillery driver on our team here. That Lorraine 155 gave some amazing support to Shadow's E75. And you'll notice he's not sitting there. He's repositioning, going around the other flank to line up a shot and support Shadow again when he, or if he, finds that M12. And the E75 is such a beast of a machine. I mean, 
wait until you see how many hits he took in this game. Now, where's that M12 likely to be? Probably somewhere in his base. He, he's going to be laid up somewhere where he can get a shot in. He's going to know how much health Shadow has left. He's going to know he can one-shot kill him, and then possibly, depending on where the Lorraine's gone, defend himself against the Lorraine, or possibly force a draw. There's only four minutes of the game left. Shadow does have Sixth Sense, so he's going to know. Even if he doesn't spot the artillery, he's going to know when he's been spotted by the artillery, which will give him an idea of where he is. E50 there in chat, asking the M12 to, to, to basically give 10 kills to Shadow. And I don't have a problem with people doing that, but I never expect people to do it. Oh, he's been spotted, which probably means that Artie is camped on the hill in front of the flag. And there he is. Now, this is hilarious. Shadow takes the shot. And it was a dodgy shot, and it went pretty accurately, but it missed. Artie... What's this? What's this? <laughs> Artie took the shot. But it hit the rock in front of him. <laughs> and he crippled himself with his own splash damage. <laughs> it just was not a good day to be driving an M12, was it? Now. Ten kills to go for here. There's a pools medal on the table. But the M12, well, he could have damaged his Amorak and killed his loader with that mistake that he made but by the time shadow gets around here he's probably still going to have reloaded is the lorraine 155 going to take the shot is he going to let him get the kill is he going to give him a pools medal personally i believe that medals like radley walters medals pools medals they should be something you earn not something that you have given to you of course if somebody's going to give them to you i'm not going to complain but it's never something that i expect I feel that, you know, they're epic achievements for a reason. You should have to earn them. Let's see if Shadow can earn his. I certainly wouldn't expect Ola Rain to hold fire. Hmm. Where's he gone? Well, he can't be far. He's in an M12. And... Any second now. Yep, there he is. And he's facing the wrong way. Artie tries it. Not good enough for this C75 driver. <laughs> Not today. So that wasn't a bad result. Look at that. Look at the collection of medals. This is his first pools medal, apparently. Um, I'm sure he'll be earning more if that performance was anything to go by. That's 103,000 credits earned. 2,851 experience. It's not doubled either. <laughs> it's with a premium account, but not double. That wasn't his first win of the day in the E75. He got the Spartan medal. He got the Pools medal. He got Steel Wall. He got Top Gun, obviously. He got Sniper. Look at that. The only reason he didn't get Confederate was because <laughs> he killed too many in order to, you know, to be able to get Confederate too. That was just absurd. And, and yet, if you look at the team scores, his team as a whole pretty much sucked. The enemy team, almost across the board, did better than their equivalent on his team. And it was purely down to him. And we've got to give it up for this artillery driver who gave some exceptional support. It was down to those two guys that this was not a horrible, horrible defeat. Look at the detailed report. 26 shots fired, 24 hits, 22 penetrations, 7,500 damage done. He took 22 hits in that game. Only 9 of them penetrated. And some of those penetrations were just track damage. 13 non-penetrating hits in his E75. Potential damage received, 8,020. Uh, that was pretty special. Howdy folks, and welcome to World of Tank Destroyers with the Mighty Jingles. This was 
up until this point anyway, a pretty uneventful game on Mountain Pass in the M48 pattern. The enemy team have eight tank destroyers. We have three. Now, I realise that the matchmaker can sometimes struggle to balance teams evenly, but do you, would you look at that? <laughs> if you've got eight tank destroyers on one team and three on another team in the same match, I can think of a way of making the team slightly more balanced than just dumping eight of them on one team. Perhaps five on one, six on the other maybe? I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too hard. Well, anyway, um, if you have a look at the northeastern flank, the enemy team's other half a dozen tank destroyers are just bum rushed and are about to kill our IS 4. The two tanks that went up the northeast side are both dead. I spotted it happening and I started rushing back to base. You know, so I could be the next one to die. <laughs> Things didn't quite work out that way. Uh, our GW Tiger has the sense to get the hell out of there. He saw it coming. I couldn't save the T-92, but I could at least avenge him. I think that's actually the first shot I've fired in this game. It's not a fantastic game for me. And then I prepare to dig in and sell my life dearly with a very brave little WZ-131 driver who came back with me. I figure I'm going to take the high ground and try and spot them as they come over. But then looking at the map, there suddenly seem to be, well, an awful lot of big nasty tank destroyers in the middle of the map rather than coming around into the base. Myself and this little scout here, we go, we go and take a poke, see what we can see. Seems clear. All right, <laughs> let's have a go. And this is where we strike pure comedy gold. It was a pretty nice piece of tank driving on my behalf, even if I do say so myself. But it's the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know he's fired. He's just taken out the scout. So my first shot blows his tracks off. Aha, here comes the leopard prototype. And then I go around him. And just to make sure, my second shot blows his tracks off on the other side as well. Which allows me and the leopard prototype to get around behind him. So that was pretty good, but his reaction, <laughs> his reaction in chat is absolutely priceless. <laughs> Look at this. You'd think he'd never had his tank killed before. <laughs> Even his own team start laughing at him. <laughs> Yeah, he does seem quite upset. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, he's still going. <laughs> Even his team are trolling him. <laughs> oh, man. Now, um, so yeah, that was good. <laughs> Not a fantastic game, but worth it for two reasons. One, that... And two, getting to put a shot into the artillery before the game ended. So I'm going to call that one a win. Why do people hate artillery so much? This is Malachi, and he's a scumbag. But he's a very good scumbag. He's in his T-92, which is a seriously big artillery. And that is a very unfortunate E-100. Now he doesn't have a very good shot at him yet, but if he keeps reversing, yeah, that'll do. 
that's going to leave a mark. You'll notice he relocates after he's fired. This is, well, this is a post-patch 8.6 arty party. There are three artillery on each side. Now, if you thought that E100 was having a bad day, you ain't seen nothing yet. A couple of enemy tanks trying to rush the north, but there aren't enough of them. And most of them are pointing their guns the wrong way. Oh. Yeah, that one's going to leave a mark as well. This T-54 is stuffed. But Malachi has seen bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Look at the pounding that T-30's taking. See this Jagdpanzer E-100? Tier 10 tank destroyer. Very, very heavily armoured. 2,200 health. Oh, shit. Not anymore. Yeah, I think if you were to ask that Jagdpanzer E100 driver what he thought about artillery, he'd have a few strong words to say on the subject. But it's okay. Malachi's not just a scumbag driver. He also drives proper tanks. Here he is in a bat chat platoon, a tier 10 game on steps. Now... A bat chat platoon can be a very, very powerful weapon in a game of World of Tanks. But you take a bit of a risk. Because, as you can see here, the enemy team now have all the top tier heavy tanks. And playing a bat chat... Generally speaking, if I see a bat chat platoon on the enemy team, I know that they're going to be a significant threat. A bat chat platoon in this kind of situation pretty much has to, well, not so much be the heavy tanks for their team, but they can't afford to play as cautiously, if you like, at the start of a game as bat chats like to play. Bat chats are scavengers. Right? They like to come into their own during the second half of a match when they can just jump on wounded enemy tanks and totally rip them apart. So they're going to have to play pretty aggressively here, just not quite as aggressively as what hero is there in that bat chat. Now the two remaining bat chats in the platoon, Malachi and Soul Eater, are timing their reloads so that they can work together and keep the fire rate going. And you can see how well it works if you're able to coordinate your fire between the platoon to ensure that somebody always has shots ready to fire. Now, what hero, the guy in the batch out who played a little bit too aggressively there, he's not actually on team speak because you can see they're talking there in chat. They're saying, yeah, don't worry about it. Everybody donks out every now and then. Come on team speak with us. And, you know, we could have told you to fall back there. And uh, what hero is saying, yeah, but going on TeamSpeak isn't going to make me not stupid. <laughs> and he knows he should have fallen back. Fallen back, sorry. Um, uh, he's, he appreciates the mistake that he made. Nevertheless, between the platoon, they've now killed four enemy tanks. And they're winning 5-3. They're both going to go for a reload now. They're, they're, they're pretty safe on this flank. They've, they've beaten off... I mean, they've killed four enemy tanks on this side of the map. They've lost two. So they're going for a reload, and they're going to go and poke this ridge and have a look and see what they can see. They know there's a Tiger II up there. But at the moment, that's it. And Malachi's reloaded. He's been spotted. Was it the Tiger too? Oh! Oh, that is bad news. That is really bad news. Two Rheinmetall Borsig Waffenträgers and an Object 268. He's got to get out of here. 
he cannot afford to let these guys reload. He's got one shot left, he fires blind, he takes out the Waffenträger, takes another hit in the process, doesn't use his repair kit. He knows that these guys, oh my god, there's a T-34 over there as well. He's just lost all of his health. Right, he got another kill out of it, but he's just lost all of his health. He's reloading. He doesn't have a lot of ammunition left. Right now, g going around the corner again and in front of that lot would be suicide. So he doesn't do that. Instead, he hightails it back to base because the western flank has just fallen. They've got a WZ-131 over there who's lost sight of the two E-100s that have just ruffle-stomped their way up that flank. And this... OK, the first shot was rushed. He should have waited for it to aim. But the second shot... The third shot... The fourth shot... Unbelievable. The old RNG just grabbed him by the nose and kicked him in the arse. Mercilessly on that one. That Tiger II should be dead. Now he's only got 10 shots left. And there are two as good as full health E-100s pushing the base. However, these two E-100s are not supporting each other. Malachi's almost reloaded. Soul Eater, who's on more or less full health, is making a run on this E-100. You can see he's using the 128mm gun, so he's going to have a faster reload while not doing as much alpha damage. Two hits. Malachi knows he can't afford to waste his shots. So he charges up the flank while Soul Eater is keeping that E100 occupied and doing a fantastic job. Look at that. Just humiliating that E100 driver. And he's out of ammo. So Malachi administers the Coupe de Grasse himself into cover because there is another E100 over there and goes for the reload. He now has seven shots remaining. Object 268 in the open. There's the other E100. WZ-131's lighting him up. Object 268 is facing the other way. Okay. Gun up. Make sure we're aimed. Takes his tracks off. Finishes him off. He's only got three shots left. Solely that. Makes the opening run on that E100. Our artillery, the Rain 15551, is also peppering this guy. Malachi's reloading. He rushes in to back him up, timing it for when Soul Eater is out of ammo. So you can keep... Oh, takes a big hit there from the E100. Could have been bigger. Could have been worse. Soul Eater is out of ammo. He breaks off. Malachi rushes in. He's only got three shots. He needs to make sure they all penetrate. And that one didn't. That one did. This is your last shot. Make it count. Gets the kill. Seven kills. And that Tiger 2 that he put five shots in earlier on, that only one of which damaged, kills him. But he was out of ammo anyway. Now Soul Eater only has five shots left. It's 3v3. The SU-101 is going ahead. Solely is considering his options. Five shots of ammo remaining. They're going to need the whole team to work together to take these three guys down. Solita can't do it himself. He, he doesn't have the ammunition for it. Ideally, these guys need to be spotting for their artillery. Use all the firepower that they have. There's the T-34. And that's bad news. He's on full health. Tiger 2, not so much. 
Somebody just landed a big old hit in on that T-34, probably the artillery. So that's good news, you know, artillery is working with them. Solely to aims. Only hits him with one out of two. That's one of the problems with the bad chat. The gun is good, but it does have a long aiming time. A lot of bat chat drivers miss on their first shot. Now. This could be interesting. Do not... Oh, shit. Uh, this is not good. I bet that Lorraine driver can't believe he missed either. I certainly can't. And... Things just got really interesting. Well, if the Lorraine is all the way over there, he's not going to get any support from the T-34 or the Tiger II. And he does need to die. So Solita goes for it. He knows his last known position. The Lorraine's pretty quick, but the Batchat is quicker. Is he actually going to rush the cap? Uh, yeah, it looks like he probably was. Now this is... Dangerous. One shot. Not guaranteed to hit with a second shot at that angle. So instead, he goes to close in and try to finish him off at close range. And this was dangerous as hell. I, I am, I can't really explain what the hell Solita was doing there. That could have ended very, very badly. The Lorraine does reload pretty quickly for artillery, but yeah, if it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. Solita's ammo situation is critical now. Now, I'm not entirely sure how many shots he has left. You can't see it in the replay because you're watching it from Malachi's perspective. Um, but he doesn't have a lot of ammo. They reckon he can kill one of the enemy tanks. He says he's got one gold and one normal. I didn't think that was... Unless he's got one clip of gold ammo and one clip of normal ammo. But earlier on he said he only had five shots left. I don't think it was possible to mix and match the ammo load. Perhaps I'm wrong. Either way, there's less than four minutes of this game left. We've lost the SU-100. So leaders on 266 health, very low on ammunition. And he's got two tanks to kill. Now this is quite sneaky. Obviously, the last known position of those enemy tanks was on the ridge, overlooking their base. But they're not there anymore. The chances are that they've stuck together, and the two of them, because they know how quick a bat chat is, and these guys have to stick together to win. They don't know how low an ammo he is, but they know that one bat chat coming across a lone T-34 who is damaged and a lone Tiger II who is damaged, the odds are with the bat chat. And so they have done the smart thing, and the two of them have driven right across the middle of the map while Solita was taking out the artillery, and they're both sitting in the cap circle. And a bat chat is fast but it isn't fast enough to make it all the way across this map. Get back to reset the cap before two tanks manage to win the game. And he does try, but he left it too little too late. And he's never going to get back in time. And even if he had, he probably doesn't have the ammunition to actually do anything about it other than possibly earn a Defender Medal. But either way, it's just too late. So, that was pretty horrible. Batchats only come with 30 rounds of ammunition. 
and when you have to do that much carrying, it's just not enough. If not for the courageous resistance award, where if, even if you're on the losing side, uh, as long as you get a medal, uh, your XP is treated as if you were on the winning team. You don't get the times two bonus for winning the first victory of the day, but your base XP is treated as if you were on the winning team. That's an 1,800 undoubled XP game. 88,696 credits and Top Gun. That was Malachi. Soul Eater did 8,000 damage in that game. I don't know how much, um, well, we can see how much XP he got. Almost as much as Malachi. <laughs> uh, but he would have earned way more. He would have earned over 100,000 credits on that game, purely because he did that much more damage. Malachi, 30 shots fired, 25 direct hits, 24 penetrations. Fired all of his ammunition. And we can answer the question about how much ammo Soul Eater had left, because he also fired 28 shots. He only had two rounds of ammo left. It was impossible for them to win that game because the bat chat just didn't carry enough ammunition. What a tragedy. So that brings this episode of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly to a conclusion. Uh, some great games there, some bad games there and some downright ugly games there too. I hope you were at least entertained. As always, take care on that battlefield and I'll catch you next time.